सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स अबाउट द सर्कुलेशन और द सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम द सर्कुलेशन इन द ह्यूमन बॉडी इज बेसिकली डिवाइडेड इनटू टू टाइप्स द सिस्टेमिक सर्कुलेशन एंड द पल्मोनरी सर्कुलेशन हियर इज द ह्यूमन हार्ट एंड इट फंक्शंस विद टू बेसिक सर्किट्स द राइट साइड ऑफ द ह्यूमन हार्ट इट बेसिकली रिसीव्स द डीऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड फ्रॉम द ह्यूमन बॉडी and it pumps the blood into the lungs here in the lungs the blood gets oxygenated and it returns to the left side of the human heart then the human the left side of the human heart the left ventricle pumps the blood into the whole body the body takes out the nutrients the oxygen and the uh, puts the waste material into the blood and that deoxygenated blood it basically returns to the right side of the heart and then the right side of the heart it pumps again the blood into the lungs it gets oxygenated it comes back and it is pumped again into the human body so basically these are two different circuits the the human the right the right side of the human heart and the the vasculature which is basically uh, taking the blood to the lungs and bringing it back to the heart it is making the pul pulmonary component of the circulation while the circuit which is taking the blood towards the human body to the rest of the body except the lungs and it is bringing the blood back to the right side of the heart it is making the systemic circulation this the pulmonary circulation is basically a small circuit while the systemic circulation is a big circuit because it supplies the blood to the whole body now the what is basically the purpose of circulation why is the blood circulating in the human body so the basic functions of the circulation are to provide nutrients to the tissues here the oxygenated blood is coming towards the tissues for example here is the kidney or intestines or the human hand or arm and the tissues basically they are made of cells so this cell basically it is the basic structural and functional unit of the human body and this is basically responsible for all the activities of the human body so it must be supplied with nutrients and this supply of the nutrient is basically with the help of circulation so first function of the circulation is to transport nutrients to the tissues and tissues are basically made, made up of cells now the second function of the circulation is to transport waste products away from the tissue now this tissue these cells of the tissue these cells different types of cells in the human body they are taking the nutrients they are they are uh, doing certain activities doing metabolism generating energy and they are also making a lot of waste products these waste products they are also removed with the help of circulation so circulation it is not only providing nutrients it is not only transporting the nutrients to the tissue it is also taking away the waste products from the cells now another function of the circulation is to conduct the hormones different types of hormones and enzymes and different chemicals they are generated in the human body and they are required in some specific part of the human body so the point where these hormones are needed the point where they are needed they are basically supplied or they are basically transported to that point with the help of the circulatory system for example some hormones are needed in the lungs then the pulmonary circuit will take the hormones towards that pulmonary uh, dead receptors which are present in the lungs similarly if some hormones are required in the intestines or the urinary bladder then the systemic circulation will take that hormones or enzyme towards that specific point finally another important function of the circulatory system is to maintain an appropriate environment environment basically the blood is coming and it is being supplied to the tissues and tissues are made of different types of cells but these cells they need some proper 
some type of environment specific environment with specific ph specific temperature specific amounts of sodium potassium calcium specific amount of each and every nutrient that environment that environment which is required for the survival of tissues it is being basically provided by the circulatory system so the functions of the circulatory systems are to transport the nutrients to transport the waste products away from the tissues to conduct the hormones or enzymes or all the chemicals which are needed and to maintain an appropriate environment for the tissues so that they can function in the optimum condi conditions now what are basically the functional parts of the circulation the heart is pumping the blood into the blood vessels and the blood vessels are of different types and all the blood vessels are basically taking part in the circulatory circulatory system the first part of the circulatory system are basically the arteries when the heart pumps the blood it comes initially into the aorta aorta is a big artery and this artery aorta takes the blood towards the arteries and these arteries basically they transport the blood under high pressure to tissues and they have strong vascular walls the function of the arteries basically is to transport the blood under high pressure because the heart is pumping and the pressure in the initial component of the aorta and the initial part of the arteries is very high so their walls are very much vascular and it is made in such a way that they can transport the blood in, in high pressure now the arteries feed the arterioles basically arterioles are they are basically the last branches of arterial system they act as control conduits or control canals for the for releasing blood into capillaries now the heart has pumping the is pumping the blood into the aorta aorta is taking the blood into the arteries arteries are basically uh, converted into the arterioles and these arterioles are basically the last the last part or the last branches of the arteries they are basically the last branches of the arterial system but the function of the arterioles or their characteristic is that they they act as control conduits control canals because they have control they have control over the contraction they can they have strong muscular walls that can close or dilate the arterioles basically the arteriole the wall of the arterioles they are muscular they are muscular and they can close or dilate the arteriole depending upon the requirement of different tissues sometimes the blood flow to a specific tissue should be increased and sometimes it should be decreased now depending upon the requirements the arterioles have the capacity to dilate or to close so they can decrease the blood supply to a specific tissue or they can increase the blood supply to the specific tissue this property is not present in the arteries and it is very much prominent in the arterioles now once the arterioles are finished they feed the blood into the capillaries that are the last part now after the arterioles we have the capillaries which are very important component of the circulatory system the capillaries are basically very small vessels they are these are the capillaries they are very small and they have pores in their walls they have small pores they are basically responsible for exchange of fluid nutrients electrolytes between the blood and interstitial fluid the tissues and the cells basically they are living in a sort of fluid known as the interstitial fluid and that interstitial fluid is basically made of different types of nutrients electrolytes and ions and the environment or the 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 conditions of the cells 
should be maintained at an appropriate conditions or an a specific level the pH the temperature and the different types of nutrients in this interstitial fluid must be maintained in maintained uh, in certain limits and that that thing or that environment of the interstitial fluid it is basically achieved with the help of capillaries the capillaries have the capacity to exchange the fluid it may give oxygenated blood to the cells and it may take deoxygenated blood or the waste material from the cells or the interstitial fluid similarly it may allow some type of electrolytes to move towards the interstitial fluid and it may take some of the electrolytes from the interstitial fluid into the blood so that's the the purpose or that's the function of the capillaries the walls are thin they are porous and they allow different types of substances to move out and come in now once the capillaries are finished the waste material or the waste product which has been collected from the tissues or the cells it goes along with the blood into the venules so venules basically collect blood from the capillaries blood was coming from the heart through the aorta into the arteries into the arterioles into the capillaries from the capillaries it was going into the interstitial fluid exchange were occurring in the interstitial fluid and then it was recollected from the capillaries into the venules so venules basically collect the blood from the capillaries and the capillaries then they feed that blood into the the venules then feed that blood into the veins so veins function as the conduits or the canals for transport of blood from venules back to the heart now the these veins they basically receive the blood from venules and the walls of the veins they are basically thin they have low pressure and they act as a reservoir of blood they have the capacity to store a lot of blood if a hemorrhage occurs or there is loss of fluid from the human body these veins have the capacity to increase the supply of blood towards the right side of the heart so the arteries basically they will transport the blood under high pressure to the tissues and they have strong vascular walls the arterioles they have the capacity to control they have the capacity to control they have the capacity to increase or decrease the amount of blood to some tissues depending upon the environment depending upon the conditions depending upon the requirements of the tissues the capillaries they have the they have the capacity to exchange the fluid exchange the nutrients and electrolytes between the blood and the interstitial fluid then the venules they basically collect blood from the capillaries and then veins basically the veins collect the blood from the venules and bring it back to the heart but veins can also act as a reservoir of blood they can store a lot of blood and they can increase or decrease the supply of blood from the peripheries towards the heart so that's all about the circulatory system the circulatory system is basically having two circuits the systemic circulation and the pulmonary circulation pulmonary circulation takes and backs bring back the blood from the lungs while the systemic circulation takes and bring back the 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 blood from the whole of the body the function of the circulation is to transport nutrients to the tissues transport waste products away from the tissues conduct hormones towards the tissues or towards the target sites and to maintain an appropriate environment in all the tissues for survival now the functional parts of circulation are the arteries arterioles capillaries venules and veins arteries supply the blood in high pressure arterioles control the amount of blood going towards some tissues it can increase or decrease the amount of blood going towards a specific tissue 
capillaries basically are responsible for exchange exchange of fluid nutrients and electrolytes between the, the between the blood and interstitial fluid venules basically collect the blood from the capillaries and veins are the final component of the circulatory system they function as the conduit for transport of blood from venules back to the heart but they also act as a reservoir of extra blood they have low pressure and have thin walls that's all about the circulatory system thanks a lot for watching the video